Boom, shakalaka laka. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Joe. For those of you who haven't been here before, welcome. And for those of you who have, hello. Thank you so much for coming back. I thought I'd make this video because I couldn't find anything like this on YouTube. Now, big massive disclaimer, I am not saying I am the queen of shipping pets from the UK to Dubai. I did it and, it, and you know, and it worked and it went well. But please don't take all my advice as, you know, golden and solid. Regulations update all the time. The British government change things all the time. The UAE government change things all of the time as well. So please make sure that you, you know, looking on those websites, the official government websites, just to make sure that everything, you know, is up to date and okay for your cat. If you're interested in this journey, please subscribe down below, click the like button, and let's get into this journey. So when we first decided we were moving over to Dubai from England, we had a bit of a problem. We had two cats, and there was no way I was leaving the cats at home. The cats are literally my children. So I decided that we were gonna find a way to get them here. And I started looking at importing agencies and people who could bring them into Dubai. Um, I think I emailed about 150 people, no joke. And the prices that were coming back were pretty expensive. And that's cool if you want to do that. And obviously it eliminates a lot of stress getting somebody else to do it all for you. But me being the person that I am, loving to organise and being a bit of a control freak, I decided I could probably do it myself and maybe cut a little bit of the cost. So, that's what I did. And don't get me wrong, it was definitely one of the most stressful things I have ever, ever done in my life. But I enjoyed the experience and the cats are here now and they're settling in really well to Dubai life. They like it. So I thought I'd go through a few steps on how I did that. If you want to join me in that journey or you want to do that yourself, this is specifically for cats going from the UK to Dubai. Now you could do the same for dogs, but the vaccinations are a little bit different. Um, and I'm not sure with other countries because of different testing and stuff like that. Probably quite similar in other countries in Europe, but you might have to check that with your vet yourself or with your kind of local department of health or export of animal agencies. Number one, the first thing that I did was contact my local vet who my cats have been going to. And I was fully aware that they would need microchipping as they hadn't been microchipped. They would also need their vaccination boosters that they've not had or they need to have. And they would also need a rabies vaccination. Now there are a few things to be cautious of with this. With regards to the rabies vaccination, they have to have that done 21 days prior, I'm sorry, I've just got notes here, 21 days prior to the UA, to moving to the UAE, and no longer than 12 months before. It, they couldn't have it done two weeks before they were to move to Dubai, and then come here, because they wouldn't give them the paperwork. So it has to be between 21 days and a full year, and that's just for a rabies um, vaccination, so that they can get their paperwork. Now they need vaccining for three different things, cats, as well as the rabies. Now I'm gonna absolutely butcher these words. I apologize if you're a vet, a cat enthusiast, or whatever else. This is just, just what you're dealing with. So the first thing they need to be vaccined for is a thing called feline rhinotracheitis. The second thing they need to be vaccined for is calcivirus and the third thing they need to be virus virus for I don't need to be virus for anything do they um injected for is pan leukop my pan leukopnia um and then after they've had all of those injections your vet will issue you with a pet passport I'm not really sure whether you need a vet a pet passport to leave because it's an EU pet passport I'll show you those um, but I got one anyway, just to be safe. I think they're about £100 for each cat from the vet. And they have things in there like their rabies stickers, their vaccination stickers, um, all information about them. Which is really quite helpful, especially if you plan on doing more travelling in the future. Once you've had that rabies vaccination, like I said, you can then bring them into the UAE and you can apply for your permit. So, from that, the second thing that I needed to do was applied to the Ministry of Climate Change and Environment here in Dubai for an import permit. Now, you can have up to two pets on that import permit. For any more than that, you need to get separate import permits. 
Now this was a super, super easy process. Like the Dubai government, the UAE government make things so easy. And all you have to do is go onto their website, which is M-O-C-C-A-E. You need to set yourself up an account, fill some information in. From that then, you fill the paperwork in about the cat. You pay for it online. Oh, actually, no, you get a request. You then go in, pay for it online. They issue you with the import license. Boom, that easy. Um, and that was super, super easy to do. I'm sorry, you have no idea what my cat is doing right now. Absolutely, absolutely insane, I don't know. Um, and then when you get that import permit from the Ministry of Climate Change and Environment, that lasts them for 30 days. So you have to make sure that you leave the country, bring them into Dubai, the UAE, within 30 days. Now, the one thing you need to be really, really organised with if you're doing this process yourself is time and your timings because you have to make sure that you've got the permits, the permits match the dates, you've got in and out at certain times, you've applied for other things, you've got your vets, checks, etc, etc. So it is quite complicated but if you are quite organised you can do this yourself. So getting the import permit was super, super easy. I also ordered pet crates for them myself and I managed to get them um, for about £37 each. Um, I'll link the website down below that I got them from and because I'd never bought anything off there before I also got some discount off them for being a first user and then along with those crates I ordered some live animal stickers um, this way up sticker kind of things little crates that go on the front food bowls and water bowls and um, some other stickers and tags I'm not going to lie, when we got to Sky Cargo, which was the plain Emirates um, company that they all do, or their cargo stuff with, they stuck stickers all over it themselves, their own live animals stickers, their own pet name stickers and whatever else. So you don't need to worry too much about getting those stickers if you're flying with Emirates. Um, it's just nice to have them so that you know that you feel super organised. Now, some countries... Um, when you ship a pet into Dubai, UAE, require you to get your pet to have a rabies titer test. I might be saying that wrong again as well. You don't need one of those if you're travelling in from the UK. We're known as a country that is safe for not having rabies, so the UAE don't need to check on that at a later date. Honestly, this cat, this cat. So the next thing that you had to do was get yourself a health certificate for your pets. Now you apply to those from DEFRA, which is in England, they're based in Carlisle. And if you go onto the internet, onto Google, and you just type in a certificate of health, vet, veterinary certificate of health for my cat, moving to the AE, UAE, sorry the cat is now shouting at himself, Rocky. to the UAE, then um, it'll show you where to fill the paperwork in. You fill in a sheet for each cat, it then gets emailed over to them, they then reply with the paperwork, you then have to get the paperwork sent to your vet. And now this paperwork is really useful for the final appointment before you move to the UAE. So that's kind of step number five and six, I don't even know what step we're at anymore, together. Um, and this document either gets sent by Royal Mail Standard Class, you can phone them and get them to send it like next day special order or via a courier and you will have to pay for that yourself and that's why you need to phone them to organise it. And they send that document direct to your vet, so whatever the name vet is you put on that document. In that document as well you also put who is the person who's collecting it in Dubai. Now I'll talk about that in a bit more detail in a moment because I did something a bit different there than what I thought I was going to do and that was just because by this point it, it made much more sense. So you fill all those forms in with DEFRA and they're great and then they take that to the vet. 24 hours before you fly to the UAE your pets need to be checked by your vet so they need to be checked that they're healthy They've had their, all of their injections done, their microchips, they've had tick and tapeworm, and that's all written down with documentation. 
and that needs to be within 10 days of transport and they want all proof of that and this certificate basically says they had this on this and that on that and the vet fills it in with columns of what all the batch numbers are and all that kind of stuff so that you can send that then over um, for with your cats for your paperwork um, I can I know you're shouting we're making a video here lad now one thing that made it really difficult for us is that we were flying over to the UAE between Christmas and New Year so we needed to make sure that our cats were seen by a vet 24 hours before and that was great our vet was really really able to do that and that worked really well and they check the cats for everything and they make sure they write everything down and you get the certificate that goes in with the paperwork I'll talk about landing in Dubai in a moment, but the other thing I want to talk about is how I actually physically got the cats to Dubai because they didn't just fly here themselves, they're not super care heads. Um, we, I contacted Emirates Direct um, and they had a company called Sky Cargo who do all their cargo shipping stuff and I sent them an email and somebody forwarded me on to a lady called Angela who was an absolute legend. Like, absolutely love Angela, what a top lady. And she, I basically said, I want to send my cats on this date. She said, you need to send me the size of the crates over, what type of cats they are. We want copies of their vaccine certificates. And then 10 days before they travel, we want their tick and tapeworm certificate. And that's in a letter headed document. So what that basically would mean is from your vet, you would need a piece of letter headed paper that says on this date, the pets were given this and this and this stamped and signed. Now one thing I did learn during this journey is there are different types of vets and it has to be done by an OV which is an official vet um, and not just a standard vet so they're the kind of OVs the people who can stamp and sign and they can fill in the passwords, passports and paperwork so you need to make sure that you've got an OV on site. You don't pay for anything with Emirates Sky Cargo until you drop the pets off in the morning. So the pets have to be at the hangar for five hours before their journey. Um, and when you get there, you fill in some paperwork, you pay, they attach all things to their crates, like stickers and paperwork and stuff. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I was obviously really nervous flying my two cats. One of them is like five and the other one's 13 and I was really anxious, I'd never done anything like this before. And Dubai's a long journey for a human, let alone for a cat who needed to be there five hours before. And then we knew it would be like three or four hours when they landed in Dubai, getting back to the apartment. So I was quite nervous about that. When we got to Manchester Airport and they came out to stick stickers on the crates for the cat, they were like talking to them and asking them what the matter was. And they took them out and put them on a forklift truck and they faced them to each other and they carried them around. and. They were just so good with them, like such nice people. They always to do this all the time with pets. And they taught me through like what would happen, that they would take them to a quiet area and let them relax. And then when the bags were going, they would take them down and put them in a quiet corner so they weren't disturbed. And then they would be the last ones to go onto the plane. And I was also obviously worried about the temperature in the plane. I had spoken to Angela briefly about this fire email and they basically said, they go in with all of the suitcases and they can control that temperature and it said on the, st on the sticker around 18 degrees so that's better than me like I'm always cold on a plane so 18 on a plane is good for a cat um, one tip I'll give you as well is when you get their water container that you can put on the front inside you can't put food in there but what I did was I froze their water the night before just because I knew that by the time they got to Dubai, it would have all gone. Now, the people who work for Sky Cargo will fill their water if they need to or they feel like they need it. Because we were flying direct from Manchester to Dubai, that makes it super easy. You're also told to put a bag of food, dry food, and salad tape it on top of each cat's crate. And when the cats arrived in Dubai, they didn't have one of those bags had gone, so I presume that they fed them. I don't know, it might have fell off. Um, but that's good, that's good and useful to know. So yeah, just freeze that water, that's really helpful for them. With regards to in Dubai, I knew that I could get myself the transit permit because I could do that on the internet, on the MOCCAE website. 
and all I needed to do was log into my account, fill it in, I needed the number which was the number from the certificate that I got when we paid with Emirates and did all the checking stuff on the day. So that I could fill it in. So I could have literally gone on my phone in the airport and filled that in myself. The thing that was concerning me was they have a veterinary check when they land in Dubai and I was concerned that they'd come off the flight and then I just didn't know what happened. And obviously I don't speak Arabic either. And when they landed in Dubai, it was already midnight. So I didn't want us to be in a situation where they landed at midnight. We then waited at a hangar for cats for four hours and it was really tiring. We had bags to check or we missed the cats or whatever else. So I decided to employ a handling agent in Dubai and this cost me a charge of maybe an extra £200. They did the paperwork, the veterinary check was included in that um, and they just did their paperwork for my cats themselves over here and then they charged me a little delivery fee and a little bit of obviously a, a convenience fee which was fine because it eliminated the stress from me. I got off the plane, collected my bags, we got a taxi back to the apartment, I got a WhatsApp message off the guy saying the cats are here, they're safe, we're just sat waiting for the paperwork and they got delivered about three and a half hours later. Um, they came in, they were clean, spotless, their cages were clean and spotless. Obviously their cable ties have been snipped on the top because the vet had to take them out to be checked. I don't know if they'd been cleaned or what had happened but they came spotless. There was nothing in the, no wee, no cat poo, no nothing in their crates and I don't believe that my cats didn't go to the toilet for 13, 14 hours because they go to the toilet about 10 times a day here. So that was great and they were just super convenient. The guy literally dropped them off at like 4 in the morning and was like, thanks, bye, and you could pay him directly via bank transfer, which meant that, I'm sorry, I've got such energy pace. <laughs> and you could pay the guy direct via bank transfer, which meant that it made it super easy. Um, and they dropped them off at home as well. The hardest thing for me, obviously, wasn't the paperwork and doing all the stuff. It was literally the cats themselves. They were fine. The guy kept saying, they'll be great, they'll be great, they'll be great. Don't worry, we do this all the time. And when the plane took off, I was like, oh, oh my God. I don't really like flying anyway. Because all I was thinking was, oh my God, these poor cats, like, what's going on? But I'm not gonna lie to you. They came, they got out, they did hide under the bed for like a couple of days as soon as they got here and now they are totally, totally happy and normal and loving life and um, I'd had them as house cats for the past five months anyway so they're used to being inside. I have got them a lead <laughs> and I've tried walking one of them on it so we can go for a stroll around Dubai. But obviously it's super hot as well, so that's the climate change for all them. But they've adapted to the food really well, they're drinking, they're eating, they're sleeping, they're using the toilet like normal. And they're really happy and just themselves. And yeah, although a stressful journey, really, really quite easy to do. Now the big one you're all going to be asking is, well, how much money did you save then if you saved quite a lot of money? I think in total, I probably spent around... A thousand pounds, maybe a little bit over, for both cats, and that's on everything. So that was a massive saving for us, um, and made it super exciting. So obviously, anything that saves you money is always exciting. Um, I ordered crates for my cats that were actually quite big, because um, I was really conscious that for the long journey, they'd be kind of trapped inside, and the idea and the guidelines that you can read on IATA, which is information about flying cats, and dogs and um, said they needed to be able to lie down and turn around and whatever else so I made sure that I got them loads of space. In reality was this cheaper to do? Yes. Even if I'd have gone with an agency who'd have done all the paperwork and everything I still would have had to have paid the vets myself so I have saved myself quite a bit of money however it is a stressful experience it can be done like I said previously if you're good at managing time and you're well organized make sure that you tick every single box so shipping crates vet information microchip vaccines rabies tick and tapeworm 10 days before a certificate that will need to go to the cargo company for that 
Obviously, it depends who you ship with. If you're going from London, you might not use Emirates. You might use somebody different. Um, they also then need their crates. Did I say crate? I might have said crate. They need their import license from the UAE government. They then need their DEFRA certificate from the UK government. They're then going to need their transit permit from the UAE government. They're going to need someone to do their veterinary checks when they get into Dubai. That's why I'd recommend using the agent there. They also need make sure they've got the stickers, making sure they've got water, making sure there's food on top for them. I'll show you now very quickly just so you can see. This is a pet passport for the EU and these are what my cats have got. They've both got one each and it just holds information in there about what their vet's name is, what their name is. So I'll show you here, cover his number up. You've got Rocky, he's feline, domestic short-haired male. He can put a picture in. It's got stuff for his rabies and all his vaccinations, so they have one of those each. They've also got their cat vaccine cards, which they've got one each of, which has their information in, and obviously, like, stuff about their vaccines and whatever else. Oh, that was something that interested me as well. When I was reading all the stuff about they need to have a calcivirus and a feline pancoloma and blah, 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 blah. I was like, I don't know what these are. My cat's had what is called, it says Versafel CVR, which I think is the brand, and then Lucasel, and that's the booster injection, and that has all three of those injections in it. So that's one thing in one. It's just their standard cat injections. Um, and then they take, took all their export license stuff off me, but there's guidelines from the Animal Plant and Health Agency. DEFRA stands for Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, and that talks about paperwork, another piece of paperwork they had, and things I had to fill in. The form I had to fill in to get their export health certificate is called an application or export health certificate for pet animals except birds. Um, and the people at that office as well were super duper helpful, like so helpful. So that's about it really. Um, I can show you the crate so you can have a look at that. I mean, if I show you now Mr. Rocky so you can see him, see how happy he is in Dubai, because he's a very happy guy. Give me one second, I'll show you Mr. Rocky. Excuse the fact that we only have one bed, because that's our life. So this will be our spare room. But... I mean, oh, he's got a tissue on the bed as well. Off my fingers where I eat Cheetos for most of my life. I mean, this guy looks pretty happy, right? He's living his best life. His best life. So yeah, pretty exciting for Mr. Rocky. If you enjoyed today's video, remember to subscribe, there'll be more stuff coming on. I'll be putting my week vlog on in Dubai, of what happened in my first week in Dubai. Thank you so much for watching, take care of yourselves, peace out.